If you want to bring clear views from the outside to the inside when you're shooting interior real estate photography, all you have to do is a window pull. Now these go very fast. They're very simple to do if they're done right. And that's what I'm going to show in this episode by going through three examples here, here, and here. And each one has a slight variation so that if you know when you're up against one of these situations or something similar, you'll know how to deal with it. Now I should say and preface this before getting into those examples is that window pulls aren't always necessary, but I can tell you after shooting literally thousands of homes here in Southern California is that I do these probably 90% or more of the time. It's not always to get the crystal clear view, but sometimes you need to get something in between and for other reasons that I'm going to mention as I step through each of these various examples. So let's take a look at the first one. This is a great example to start with since this has challenges that will set the stage for doing the other two examples. We've got some things blocking the view to the outside including that table, the chairs, some things hanging from the chandelier. So if you tried to cut in a view to the outside it would be very difficult to make this seamless. But doing a window pull it is very very simple. So let's jump over to Photoshop. In Photoshop, we have here uh, the footage that would be necessary to make this entire thing. Up on top is this ambient shot and underneath of it is our uh, flash shot and then we have window pulls underneath of it. And I'm going to get to all those really fast here. So what we want at the very top in this ambient shot is what I talk about for the flambient blending. If you're not familiar with that, take a look, uh, link in the description for this video, download my ebook on interior photography. Basically what this means is I'm going to take this uh, ambient shot turn it into luminosity mode and then change its opacity down to 50 or 40%. In this case, 40% works really well. You can see that opacity is down to 40%. So that just took the edge off of it being real flashy, which was here, which could have been acceptable, but this worked out really well. Anyways, the window pull portion of it, if we get down to that footage, we can see something that looks maybe a little counterintuitive. Why am I flashing so hard against those windows? Let's take a look at a lighting diagram. Looking down from the top, here I am with the camera. We can see there's the table, there's the slider up here, the other room is over on this side. What I'm doing is instead of doing the typical ceiling bounce, what I'm doing here is pointing the flash directly at the window. So that's a little bit different and the reason for that is that we want to overexpose the interior while we have it set for the exposure of the outside. So you would set your camera's exposure so you have that nice view to the outside and then flash enough flash power at those windows. Now, if we go back and take a look at this example and we zoom in, we can see that there's a couple problems that we have here. The biggest one is that I've got this flare, this reflection from my flash that's hitting the glass. We don't want that. It's also causing it to be a little bit milky. So all that we have to do in this case is turn the flash the other direction. And that's what we'll do with a second window pull by just having the flash over on this side then directed at a different angle. And that's what's this particular shot down here. Now there's a lot of stuff going on with also shadows hitting here. We have to be careful of that. But what we're able to do now is in both of these shots, we have an overexposed interior frame around the window, also overexposed elements within here. And that's what we want. That's going to make this come out in Photoshop. And then we can deal with those shadows very quickly. So anyways, let's take a look at that. So we've got once again our ambient, our flambient shot here. Our ambient was set to 40%. And also, by the way, we're going to get rid of these reflections up here, which is another reason. This was from the flash up here. We got to get rid of those and they will go away with the window pull. Zooming back out here, we're going to take our ambient, turn it back on, take our first window pull, drag it all the way up to the top and we're going to turn it instead of into normal mode. We're going to turn that into darken mode and immediately you see the view come out. Boom, it's there. So let's zoom in here and take a look. Now the rest of the image has all these shadows. We don't want the full thing. We only want a portion of it. So what you do is you add a layer mask. I like to go up to the menu and go layer, 
layer mask, and then hide all. And I use keystrokes to do this. Um, there's a lot of ways to do it in Photoshop, whatever you feel comfortable with. All we want is a hide all layer mask. Then take your polygon tool, that's up here. And just roughly anywhere around here, draw that polygon. You can see I'm just going all over the place. I don't need to cut that in. Then reverse your colors on the keyboard from white to black to black and white by pressing X. And then on the mask, press the delete key. Reverse your colors by pressing X again. Deselect, I do control D. Now, there's some things going on because of this overlap. You can see down here I've got some shadows, so we'll just want to erase some of that off the mask. So we'll take an eraser. I've got it set to 30% flow, which is eh, probably enough. We'll just erase that out of there. A little bit going across the table here, so I can erase that as well. Okay, so that's looking pretty even. A little bit overlapped over here. It's hardly noticeable, but we'll just touch that as well. Now, we have that reflection over here, remember, from that flash, and that's why it looks a little milky right there. So we're gonna take the other window pull that was shot at that other angle, move it to the top, same thing, put it into a darken mode, and then layer, layer mask, hide all. Then I'll take a brush at about, let's say, 30% flow. And all I have to do now is just start tapping that in. So that's our repair, and that's all that it took to make that happen. So pretty good looking. We don't have really any other shadows. Let's zoom out here, take a look. Pretty good. There's a few other edits that we could do, desaturating the ceiling, a few small color correction things. But anyways, when this was all done, it looked like this. Okay, let's move on to the second example. Now you remember this one, the finished shot, this is pretty good looking. We can see these views to the outside and this is a case where window pulls are absolutely necessary. There's so much about these windows and the view that sells this house for about $2 million that we have to be able to show this no matter what. So let's jump over into Photoshop. So here in Photoshop, we've got the same setup where I've got an ambient shot at the top I've got a flash shot here, and then I've got a window pull shot where I'm pushing the flash toward the, all the windows. And then underneath of it though, you can see once again, I had a flash reflection over here. And that's gonna go away by doing what I call a repair shot. And I take these no matter what. After I do a window pull shot, I just turn the flash off, take another shot. That's all you have to do. And we're gonna use that in this particular case to repair that. So let's start at the top and we're going to do the same type of flambient that we did before. And by the way, you can see how I lit this particular one. There's a reflection of a shoot through umbrella right there. This entire flash shot was done with just one AD 400 pointing into the room with a shoot through umbrella. Super simple, very soft light. Now let's take that ambient layer up at the top. We'll turn that into luminosity mode and we'll change its blending mode to let's say 50%. Okay. Pretty good, but now we gotta do window pulls. So we're gonna take that window pull shot and we're gonna move it all the way up to the top. Then turn it into darken mode. And then go layer, mask, hide. Now, real roughly, we can zoom out here and just go around all the various windows. And once again, just very rough. Look how I'm overlapping the banister. You don't have to worry about all this other stuff in the way because our goal is that we overexpose for the interior around the windows, which will go away when we apply darken mode in that layer, which we did. And now that we've got those polygons selected, reverse your colors from white and black to black and white by pressing X, hit the delete key, and then reverse your colors by pressing X, Control D to deselect. Now, that looks pretty good. We have some shadows that are showing up down here, you can see. So that's an easy enough thing to do. Once again, we just take our eraser tool and we just erase that away. But I didn't have to try to cut around this banister and all those posts. What a hassle that would have been, right? So we do have this small little thing over here to fix. And if I wanted to also, I can put in the window pull here. So we're gonna do all that. First, let's fix this. You can see that in the mirror, realistically, it should show that. So all you have to do is just take a brush and just tap in some of that. I'm using a 30% flow. It's kind of a magic number. You can see up here at the top, 30% flow. And I'm tapping that in, so that's also showing up in here. It's like magic using this darken mode in Photoshop. 
Now for the repair layer. Let's take this. Remember, all that the repair layer is, we're moving it up to the top. It's the exact same thing as the window pull, but just without flash. And what we'll do is we'll hide this layer mask. So layer, mask, hide. Then we can go in here, and there's a couple areas that really would uh, benefit from some repair from this. You can see there's a bit of a reflection right here. And we've got that flare that's right there. So what I like to do is to take a polygon tool and just roughly inside the window. You don't have to try to cut out the window. You just need to get somewhere inside of it. So you can see I'm just being rough. I'm just going to get around those areas. Now this limits to where then I would be doing editing. I'll take my brush, 30% flow, and then tap that in. You can see that's fixed. Same thing over here on that reflection. And that's it. So that's all that it took to then get that view. And of course, when this was all done, it looked like this. Now let's move on to our third example, which has some other challenges to it. And you can see here that this particular one has a lot of little frames around each individual piece of the window. That would be a nightmare to try to cut out. So we're not going to do that. A darkened mode window pull takes care of that lickety split. So let's go over to Photoshop. Same thing is going to be applied here. I've got an ambient shot up here. I've got a flash shot. In this case, it's something typical like I would show out of my lighting guide where I've got a key light near camera. I've got a fill light that's over here on the other side of the room. Sometimes you have to do a two-sided composite on those. Topic for another time. Let's do our a flambient just real quick to get that out of the way. We'll take this. You can see I've turned that into luminosity mode and then we'll change its opacity, let's say down to about 50%. Okay, looking good. Now, in some cases, this may be good enough. You could even possibly just put on a layer mask and erase some of that. But being in luminosity mode, what's happening is it's washing out those colors that are outside because of the luminance that's being applied to that area, not the color. But a window pull is just so easy to do. Now, in this case, though, there are two window pulls because, once again, here's my window pull where I'm overexposing, and boy, did I hit it hot, and I'm now also flaring off this window. So what I'll do in those cases is I'll walk over to shoot another angle, and this usually works really well, and that'd be enough, and I'm making sure that I also have this. So I'm actually standing over here shooting at the windows this way. So these two will work just fine for what we need. So there's our flambient blending. Let's first take our first window pull and we'll move that up to the top. We'll turn that into darken mode. You can see already it looks a lot better. Layer mask hide. Let's just zoom in a little bit, see what we're doing. And now let's take a polygon and we'll just go across this entire wall of windows. Lickety split. We'll just go down here, bring that up here, and then close it. Reverse your colors from white to black to black and white by pressing X, hit the delete key, reverse the colors again, deselect. So that looks pretty good. In fact, you can hardly see that there was a flash reflection there, but let's fix that anyways. Let's take that other window pull up to the top. We'll turn that into darken mode and then layer mask hide. Now here, you can already see, if I were to turn that off and on, how it was getting milky over here because of that glare. So let's just take a brush, 30% flow, and start tapping some of that in there. Tap, 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 tap. So that's looking pretty good. Now, the one thing you'll also notice here is that I didn't go for crystal clear views to the outside. I did want it to have a little bit of a sunny, a little bit of a blown out look, and that's just what was set in the camera's exposure. So to recap on that, so you get the proper exposure when you're trying to do a window pull, is that the exposure of your camera should be exposing for that outside view. And then you use enough flash power to aimed at the windows to overexpose the frame around the window. That way, when you put it into darken mode, everything starts showing up and you have yourself a very quick, very fast, very simple window pull.